Our planet has undergone five mass extinctions so far, and it's estimated that we're well on our way to the sixth. The populations of every animal species on Earth are rapidly decreasing, with human activities accelerating the rate of animal extinction beyond the natural processes. Encroachment, hunting and overconsumption pose threats to the habitats and lives of wild animals, leading to the permanent extinction of many species. The next extinction event is expected to be more severe than the impact caused by the meteor that hit Earth some 60 million years ago. In late 2018, the passing of a single animal captured the attention of conservationists globally. It was the death of Sudan, a 45-year-old northern white rhino. The significance is that Sudan was the last surviving male northern white rhino on Earth. During the 70s and 80s, Rhinos in Africa were hunted ruthlessly. Illegal hunting is driven solely by the human demand for their horns. The horn, located on the bridge of the nose, has considerable market value, ranging between 20,000 and 65,000 US dollars per kilogram. Rhino horn is valued for its use as a crucial ingredient in traditional Chinese medicine and as a material for crafting ancient daggers coveted by collectors. Hunting has drastically diminished the once sizable population of rhinos across Africa. Their survival as a species is of great concern. Sudan was fortunate to have been spared from being hunted because he was transported to a zoo in the Czech Republic. While alive, Sudan stood as a symbol of hope for wildlife researchers. Unfortunately, he died before siring any offspring to continue the species. It's a very sad thing to lose Sudan because then it amplifies, it shows clearly um, the extent of human greed and what sort of impact human beings can have on nature. Um, the death of Sudan actually shows that clearly, that if we don't take care of what we have, we will definitely continue to lose it and particularly lose other species that are currently endangered. Rhinos rank among the species experiencing the steepest reductions in population globally. While no rhino species in Africa has yet become extinct, several, like the northern white rhino, are critically endangered, with very few remaining. In Asia, Sumatran and Javan rhinos also face critical endangerment, with fewer than 100 individuals estimated to remain in the wild. Mountain gorillas are another species at risk of extinction, facing imminent danger of disappearing permanently from our world. Endemic to Africa, their existence is jeopardized by threats such as war, encroachment and hunting for the pet trade. This group of orphaned mountain gorillas is under close protection in the Republic of the Congo. They are one of the few surviving troops after the massacre in 2007. During that period, mountain gorillas were brutally slaughtered by coal smugglers, who sought to clear the way for unhindered coal transport. The survivors faced ongoing threats from wars within the country and conflicts with neighboring nations over natural resources, a situation that persisted for more than 20 years. The Republic of the Congo remains among the few African countries abundant in diamonds, copper and cobalt. These Congolese officers are not only monitoring coal smugglers, their rifles also serve as a deterrent to poachers who target baby gorillas for export to Asia. They are heavily armed, akin to soldiers at war. Augusto Mburanumwe, director of the southern sector of the Virunga National Park, explains that nowadays 
poachers are also heavily armed. Therefore, people need to be trained to confront them. He is confident the poachers would not be able to challenge the Valiant Guards effectively, due to the training provided. Tropical forests contain the greatest biological diversity. Africa is one of the few places on the planet with tropical forests. The imminent extinction of rhinos and gorillas, Africa's oldest species, signals a decline in biodiversity, foreshadowing a wider potential disaster. Dr. Yudnei Shin, research director at the Institute of Research for Development, or IRD, emphasizes that biodiversity is currently in a precarious state. They carefully analyze historical trends related to the impact of human activity on biodiversity, assess the current state of biodiversity, and prepare comprehensive potential future scenarios. Scientific findings show that many animal species have vanished from the Earth since humans emerged. Human activities relentlessly encroach upon and destroy wildlife habitats, leading to a steady decline in biodiversity. Every species contributes significantly to intricate ecosystems, shaping the food chain and ultimately affecting human well-being. Despite widespread ignorance, humanity could be on the brink of another mass extinction event. It is estimated that Earth is approximately 4.5 billion years old. Over those billions of years, our planet has undergone five mass extinctions. This pattern of birth and death in living organisms is a response to changes in nature. The first extinction event was 443 million years ago, with the most recent occurring 65 million years ago. The first coincided with the arrival of the Ice Age. The frozen oceans led to an estimated 50 to 100 meter drop in sea levels, resulting in the extinction of approximately 70% of marine life. The second mass extinction is believed to have been a consequence of ongoing fluctuations in the world's climate, leading to the extinction of more than half of all marine species. The third event was the largest extinction in the world's history resulting in the loss of 95% of all terrestrial and underwater species. Speculation is that it was caused by either a meteor impact or the eruption of an underwater volcano. The fourth event involved a series of volcanic eruptions, which led to the extinction of three quarters of all living things on Earth. The most recent event and most widely known is associated with an asteroid crashing into the Earth. It resulted in the extinction of over 70% of all living organisms, marking the end of dinosaurs on this planet. The end of the dinosaur period marked the beginning of humanity's evolutionary journey, which continues today. These five mass extinctions, all triggered by natural events, brought about significant changes. A study by the US National Academy of Sciences highlights that the world is approaching its sixth mass extinction, primarily driven by the invasion of a relatively new species, humans. In recent decades, one third of the world's 27,500 animal species have experienced a drastic decline. If this trend continues, three quarters of all species are projected to become extinct in the next century. Animal populations, including giraffe, lions and elephants, are consistently dwindling, to the extent that humans must wake up to the reality that they are on the brink of extinction. While the concept of a sixth mass extinction is still debated among scientists, the decline in these animal populations 
is undeniable. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you. The plains of northern Kenya, which once teemed with giraffe, are noticeably emptier today. In the last 30 years, the number of giraffe across Africa has declined by 40% dwindling to fewer than 100,000. The primary cause of this decline is habitat encroachment and deforestation, compounded by civil unrest and the hunting of giraffe for trade and sport. An alarming number of giraffe have perished to feed human demand for their horns and tails, sought after as decorations or collectibles. Wildlife researchers John Doherty and Jacob Leodora have been in the area collecting data on the ongoing decline in the number of giraffe. Each afternoon, the pair monitor the behavior of these graceful creatures using a GPS-equipped camera and a sound recorder to track the movements of the herd. Across the continent, across the whole of Africa, giraffes have declined by an estimated 40% just in the last 15 years. Reticulated giraffes here in the northeast of Kenya in the same period have declined by more than 80%. In 1998, there were 36,000, and now there are fewer than 7,000 left. Not far from Kenya, in the Central African Republic, wildlife park officials are on the lookout for Christelle, a young giraffe which has been taken by poachers. Whether walking through the jungle, wading through rivers, or operating like gorillas. This baby giraffe is their focus. The operation unfolds alongside various training sessions that involve camouflage skills, precise movement, and accurate shooting skills to attack the hunters. When two gunshots ring out, accompanied by the shouts of teammates, everyone has to aim their weapons and run to apprehend the poachers. Trained like soldiers, they're prepared to take on armed groups of poachers, such as the Muslim Seleka militia and the Janjaweed horsemen from Sudan, roaming across Central Africa. These forest rangers deploy manpower and weapons to track down the tiny baby giraffe, the last of its kind in this forest. Sergeant Simplice, a forest ranger in the Central African Republic, recounts that Christelle had parents but they were both killed by local poachers. He tells us that he was shot during a confrontation with Sudanese poachers. It hit him from behind. Over the last 40 years, the giraffe population in this area has plummeted from 3,000 to fewer than 10. And to date, we remain uncertain about whether Christelle, the last baby giraffe, has been found. In late August 2019, a meeting of the signatories to the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, or CITES, officially added giraffe to the endangered species list. Consequently, trade in giraffe is now subject to stringent control measures. I think it's been a good meeting. There's been some really positive outcomes, uh, new protections for some species like the giraffe, um, and also some, some strong opposition to the idea that ivory trade and stockpiles of ivory sales and rhino horn is a way of solving some of the conservation problems. We've seen that. The decline of giraffe is a poignant example of a species silently facing extinction. This aligns with the debate about the approach of the sixth mass extinction, with numerous commonly seen species continuing to decline in numbers. Forest encroachment, overconsumption, pollution and overpopulation are believed to contribute to the accelerating approach of the sixth mass extinction. When it happens, it will mark a crucial departure from previous extinctions in at least one significant aspect. Unlike the preceding five triggered by natural disasters, the next mass extinction 
will be a consequence of human activity. While it is disheartening, there is, however, a glimmer of hope and optimism. Being the cause of the problem, humans also hold the key to potentially postponing the next extinction event. Human behavior is, after all, a controllable factor, unlike natural disasters. Extinction of species is a natural phenomenon, and it's anticipated that approximately 1 in 10,000 species of mammal will naturally become extinct every 100 years. Over the past 1,000 years, though, it has been observed that on average, 24 of every 10,000 mammal species have become extinct. All types of animals, including reptiles, amphibians, fish, vertebrates, birds and mammals, are now facing extinction twice as fast as they should. The approaching mass extinction requires urgent action. The protection and expedited breeding of endangered species have become essential special operations. Chilean herpetologists are currently engaged in locating endangered frogs in a watercourse in the Atacama Desert in northern Chile. These tiny frogs, belonging to the critically endangered Ranidae frog family, are captured and placed in plastic bottles. Amphibians have been facing mass extinction since the 1980s, with their habitats diminishing due to pollution and rivers drying up thanks to climate change. Osvaldo Cabeza, herpetology supervisor from the Chilean National Zoo, notes that these animals usually arrive in poor physical condition, emaciated and malnourished. Additionally, they often have loose skin and lesions. All of the frogs have been transported to the Chilean National Zoo for rehabilitation and to take part in a breeding program aimed at preventing their disappearance from our world. Osvaldo emphasizes that herpetologists are operating based on the idea that these frogs could be some of the last. As a result, there's a heightened responsibility to care for them, breed them, and initiate other efforts to boost their population. Parallel efforts are underway in the northern region to enhance the quality of the environment where these animals live, as their existing habitat is almost gone. On the other side of the continent, two sea otters travel on a private plane from Alaska to France. Covering a distance of 9,000 kilometers, the pair arrive to be cared for at France's Oceanopolis, a marine animal sanctuary. Sea otters were once one of the most abundant creatures, but they faced near extinction in the early 20th century due to hunting by humans. They were hunted in oceans worldwide, from Japan and Alaska to Mexico. Recently, the population of sea otters has rebounded, thanks to laws prohibiting their hunting and their relocation to protected areas. Despite the improvements, many sea otters remain in human care, as nature is not yet safe enough for them to be returned to the wild. Eric Hussano, director of Oceanopolis, explains that the animals always need to be in the water. While there are otters from the Pacific in aquariums, like those in the US, Copenhagen, Lisbon and Japan, the presence of these otters is quite rare. The global population of sea otters is currently only around 130,000, classifying them as an endangered species. Nonetheless, the resurgence of the otter population stands out as one of the most significant successes in preserving aquatic animals from extinction. The toll of hunting and harming wild animals is a steep price to pay. Now, more than ever, it's imperative for everyone to take every possible measure to protect animals from attacks by their fellow humans. Mass extinction is not a novel occurrence on our planet, but the next could be the first caused by us. While humans don't face the same immediate threat as other species, our survival hinges on the intricate food chain 
and the abundance of nature. Especially in an era where the world's human population is growing exponentially, failure to recognize our inherent connection to nature could threaten our survival sooner than one might expect. <laughs>